My F5 local traffic manager, Big IP password recovery. You know, sometimes bad things happen to good people. So, you know, like we kind of said, every once in a while, bad things happen to good people. Or, I suppose more importantly, kind of like what I did, is you buy some equipment and it was used ahead of time, or you get it in an acquisition, or, you know, whatever it may be that you come across equipment that you didn't previously own and somebody else administered. Maybe uh, your previous admin left on bad terms or something. But every once in a while, you get equipment and you can't get into it. And you hate when that happens. So one of the things we do is kind of go through how we do password recovery in order to make this actually work. And I had to do this for my 1600 as well when I got it. So when we start to look at it, kind of one of the key things to keep in mind is your, well, obviously it starts with you must have physical access. And really you must have console access as well. So as you're powered up and everything else and it's all in there and you, you, know, you can't get in so you don't know what's going on, you need to reboot the big IP. Now, this could be done, I suppose, by pulling the power plug and plugging it back in. But one of the really cool things is that we have that LCD screen on all of our, uh, you know, all the big IP systems. So I can actually go in there and do a reboot off of that without needing to know a password. So that's very cool for me. So it makes my life pretty easy. So I will go ahead and, you know, reboot via, in, in my case anyway, via the LCD screen. Then we have to go in and interrupt that boot phase. Okay, so basically, whenever any Unix-based system comes up, there, there's a little menu that pops, well, there could be anyway, a boot menu that pops up to it, and we get to select which image that we're going to boot. Usually there's like a three to five second timeout value on there, but if we want to change something, you use your arrow keys. You can also use the Shift-6, so the carrot key, or the V for up and down arrows as well. Uh, some alternatives depending on your VTY settings. But in any event, arrow around until you get the appropriate image. There will be a couple things on your boot menu. The one you want is going to be set as VM Linux, L-I-N-U-Z. So we're going to find that one, we're going to select it, and we're actually going to hit E to edit it. Okay. What you want to do, and your command line may be very simple, it may just say slash boot slash VM Linux, but either way, it may have some command, you know, a bunch of command line options on the end of it. Go to the very end of that line and put a space and add the word single on there, because okay? we're going to go into single user mode is what we're going to do. You can hit enter, that'll go ahead and keep that line on there. As long as that line is now selected to, to boot to that particular one that you just edited, hit the B key for boot. Okay, so that'll boot using those new options. Now, once we get into, you know, that it loads the operating system and it gives us a login prompt, which you're kind of sitting there going, uh, but wait, didn't you just tell me we didn't have the login? Well, the really cool thing in single user mode is I don't have to use a login. You can just hit enter on it and it'll log you in with no name. Now, after I do this, however, I do have to kind of finish up everything. So I want to mount all of my drives you know, that'll give me access to the, the directories and stuff that existed previously. So I'll mount at minus A. Then I'll use the password command, or pass WD, for the root. Right? Or admin, or whichever user I'm going to change in there, but most likely it'll be root if you don't know what it is. So password root, and then enter the password, your new password that you will remember this time, of course. Enter that twice, and then after you're out, back at a, a pound sign prompt, go ahead and type reboot and let the system boot as it normally would and now you have your new login and you remember your password and everything is perfectly cool. So let's kind of watch this. Okay, so we'll start out in here that we get our screen, we'll kind of see what's going on for it, kind of scroll through it here, we get down to the login prompt, can't get onto it. So I'll go through my LCD and we'll go ahead and we'll let things reboot. Okay, so over on the LCD side is where we'll kind of pop that up, go to my system options, there we go. And it can't get into things in here in just a minute. We're going to see stuff start to shut down. Okay, so we're seeing that init sending process down here. So we get all the information for it being in the shutdown big IP. Lets me know exactly what's going on. Okay, so we got to sit here and kind of watch our, our reboot window at this point. Shutdowns are never as fast as we want them to be. Okay, so stopping my various processes on there, that's all perfectly cool. Okay, now we'll start to see the screen blip on here. And again, we got to watch for it as we go. So during this restart now, as it starts to come up, like I said, watch for that boot menu. It's only going to be there for a couple seconds, so we are going to have to, you know, kind of pay attention to it and use our arrow keys to be able to interrupt that portion. Now, don't, don't hit the delete part. We're not getting into BIOS or anything like that. 
All right, so here's the building of our menu right here. Now we can use our up and down arrow to figure out what we want. Now in our case, we're going to use 11.1 because the, the latest image that I have on here. We could do other things with the maintenance and the diagnostics, but we're not going to right now. Now notice the kernel, the VM Linux, has a bunch of other things on there, but we're going to use E to edit that line. All right, so it brings up the whole line on there. All I'm going to do is add the word single on the end of it. All right, go ahead and hit enter to accept those changes. And now, kind of like it says at the bottom, now that we're still selected on that, I'm going to use B to boot with that particular option. So now it'll go through rebooting the system with the new um, uh, tagline that we've added on there. And we don't need to change that, by the way. I didn't save it or anything. So nothing to worry about going forward. But as we're doing right here, we'll just kind of watch that login process as we get down to it. And it's nice. Our disks are all clean. That's all good. Initial modules, come on, come on. All right, so there we go. So no login name necessary, so we're at a prompt right now. So we'll go ahead and do that mount minus A. Very simple, no, you know, nothing else it tells me. But now I'll put the password in for root. Type it in what I want the new password to be. It'll ask me to go ahead and type that in again. There we go. So type it in a second time. Perfectly good. Hopefully we remember what it is this time. All I got to do is reboot, and it'll shut the stuff down. It'll go into, uh, you know, back through its boot process. Do not need to interrupt anything at this point in time. Now we're going to boot up as we always were, and we'll be able to log in just fine. So excellent stuff that we've done. And now we are ready to rock and roll. That entire process would take probably about two and a half minutes in there, at least on, on the smaller end boxes. So do be aware of that, but good things now can happen again. Get access to your box, and we'll step through all the other configuration stuff that we need to do now. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.